I, I too want to thank you for being here and uh, probably want to do is, is give you some context as to what we hope to achieve as a result of this. You know, if you ask me to define reintegration, I'm not sure I could give you an accurate definition. If you ask me what do you want me to specifically do, I don't think I could give you a clear job description. What we are talking about is a totality of experiences and so forth. I had the great honor of, with Command Sergeant Major Bob Boone. Where's Bob? All right, stand up, Bob. Give him a hand. <laughs> Bob has been my battle buddy, and we were over in Afghanistan and Iraq 21 months ago, and then we were over in Iraq and uh, Afghanistan in September, in Iraq in, uh, in October. We got to at least six different locations, probably the most locations of any of those visits uh, that they can ever record. Talil, uh, TQ, El Assad, Balad, Anaconda, Scandia, Liberty, uh, and without exception, uh, what they are doing over there is, is outstanding. So what you are gonna receive when you come back home are troops that are very, very proud of what they did. And they can give you examples of things that they found when they got there, what they did to make it better, and to have direct results. When I talk to mechanics who talk about, literally, and have evidence that they've saved some lives that went outside the wire. So everyone is involved, and they're very, very positive and very, very proud. The genesis of this program probably goes back 30 some years ago when those same people came back and no one gave a damn. That was probably the biggest issue. We don't know what the culture is going to be when they come back home. Uh, there's an interesting editorial in the Pioneer Press yesterday or the day before that talks about it. You know, for the last three, four years, no one has dared badmouth the military. Okay. In fact, we all know of people in uniform who've had their dinner uh, paid for, et cetera. Uh, that's very, very positive. But we've had the elections. We have this new study. More and more people, uh, they're not sure. But we are concerned about the concept of how would you feel that if you were pulled out of your life, a year and a half to two years of your life was taken away from you. You went through the most traumatic experiences in your life, and I'm talking about the families also in this. And when it's all said and done, the nation turns around and says, you screwed up. We don't think that's gonna happen, but we will not allow that to happen. And I wanna compliment, uh, is Chaplain Morris in the room? Where is Chaplain Morris? I call him John the Baptist, because he's been out in the wilderness. <laughs> but seriously, he's been out in the wilderness trying to pitch the word, trying to explain to people this, what we're talking about is not some uh, news soundbite in the evening. This is something that transcends everything. It is so important. How we treat the soldiers when they come home and how we have treated the families as they have been here is gonna be extremely important. We have been fighting with concepts like, I'm okay, don't worry about me, I'm cool. And then two, three months later, well, it wasn't so cool. Also, the, the concept of don't worry. When my son or daughter comes home and they have my home cooking, they'll just be happier and everything will be back to normal. It's not going to be normal. You're not normal. But I would dare say to you that you are seeing the rebirth of the greatest generation yet to come. Now let me explain that. Why was World War II veterans always said to be the greatest? They were plucked out of their homes, 
Back in World War II, most people got married to someone who was within a 20 to 30 mile radius of their home. They took all these people, they pulled them out of the roots, they went screaming, yelling, or volunteered, whatever, but they were gone. And they spent wartime conditions in Paris. And those wartime conditions may included uh, having a nice Bordeaux on, in a, on the rivers and on the banks in France and so forth. When they came back, they said, you know, I want more. They were disciplined in being able to not only take orders, but to give orders and to plan and so forth. You know, what, what I'm really afraid of is these young people are going to come back and one, almost guaranteed, they'll probably have some type of career change vision because they know they are better than what they thought they were. They will come back and they will not probably tolerate ignorance as much because they say, because they've been going outside the wire for a year saying, I want to make sure the guy next to me has got their act together. And we in the guard are going to be transformed because you want me to do what? I mean, that was the biggest struggle. First thing I was told when I came back, I'm an old Vietnam vet, was forget everything you learned in Vietnam because you'll never use it again. <laughs> we got to have a FIBA. Well, what's a FIBA? Forward to edge of the battle area because the bad guys will be on that side of it and you'll be on this side of it and everything will be clean. <laughs> we trained that way for 30 some years. Now here's what I want you to pick up from today. There is no school solution. If you want a solution in a little kit bag that says here's what we have to do, you're going to be wrong. I, I use analogies quite often and I want you to have gone down to Fleet Farm and have opened up a body 1895 bag for tools. And once you have that bag of tools today and until they come home and even after they get home, I want you to pick up pearls of wisdom and put those tools in your toolkit. We've been trying to do that uh, for a long time and it's working. It's slow, it's deliberate. For example, as a good troop always does, they never write me to have a concern, they always write the governor. <laughs> yeah. And he says, hey, we got a bunch of guys and we all want to come back, we're going to go to school. And I know the state's done a lot, but how are you going to do and what are you going to be able to do for us when we come back home? Because we want to get back in school and we may be coming late and some of these schools have policies that, you know, you got to register by a certain time. And I saw the most beautiful letter written back because we staff it out and they write it back. Yes, this is important. We got it. We're working on it, we got it covered, but most of your, in fact, really all your questions are answered on these two links to our website. Okay? So what we have is we've got the tuition assistance, we've got the vet centers, we've got all of these things that are just starting to bubble up and to work and to make things happen. So those things are, that are going on that way. We have the PrEP program. If you are not familiar with the PrEP program, encourage them to get involved with it. Uh, it's, it's, it's just the right thing to do. Uh, but also it's, uh, it's talking to the communities. It's, uh, we will do that. And probably it's even better that we do it. So sometimes if you have a community situation that you're not getting it, give us a call and uh, will come out there and, and talk to them. After they listen to Chaplain Morris, they seem to uh, uh, get the message and it goes out well that way. 